Hey guys, it's Greed, better known as Gradito here. Um, I think I want to talk about 5v5 again and why it is objectively the superior format. Um, now, obviously, this will be a surprise to some of you. I've kind of been known in the past to say 6v6 was better. But after some evaluating and really looking at down and breaking down the numbers, I've come to the conclusion that, you know what, dude, I was wrong. 5v5 is a significantly better format. It's superior in every way. It's more fun than 6v6. And it's just simply a, a better game in terms of competitive viability as well as casual play. So I want to I wanna go over that a little bit because... I think it's important that um, I voice the fact that I've changed my opinion, and I think 5v5 is better. First of all, the main point, I think, for 5v5 being the superior format, of course, is that because you only have one tank now, the power of two tanks gets formed into one, and you become like a super tank, which is super fun. And it's also kind of really engaging for all the other players, because now... There's no longer like a split of that pressure. Instead of like there being like two tanks applying a amount of pressure, you get equal pressure from that one tank, which makes it more concentrated, which, you know, adds a level of complexity to the game now because if you wish to engage with that tank, you're you're in fear of the fact that, you know, that one tank is now super duper tank and he's going to be doing the job of what those both tanks were doing, which makes the genuinely more fun because it gives you more options because you can either choose to avoid it or take on the super epic mega tank which is honestly way better especially when it comes to competition in the ranked mode because if you're playing tank then you have the the weight of two people on your shoulders but to compensate for that you become a super tank and you become really strong which is just it's just better. It's just significantly better. Plus, the Q times are better. Plus, it's more fun, right? There you go. Uh, my second reason is because DPS and support have more options because they're less likely to be shut down by a tank. Like I said, the pressure is no longer split between two tanks. It's all focused on one, which means that the DPS and the support no longer have to fear, you know, maybe the Reinhardt who is... Uh, probably the best tank in the game in a worst one reinhardt is no longer holding his shield down main right and like blocking a shitload of damage while like the zarya is like chewing you through right but running you down and stuff because that that the split in pressure but now it's like that reinhardt who i think honestly needs a nerf in this game to be completely honest now reinhardt is like if he wants to pressure you you gotta work for it so which means you have more options because now you don't have to be either dealing with one tank or the other tank you can choose to ignore that one tank which means you have more options right you have the ability to not have to deal with that because the pressure isn't split anymore uh, point number three i'm gonna make q times are vastly superior i mean come on at the end of overwatch one i was getting probably i don't know in top 500 probably like 45 minute dps q times and now in top 500 i'm getting maybe 35 minute q times so there's been a vast improvement there that's 10 minutes of my life that i'm saving i mean that's that's that adds up right think about it like if i play like a hundred games and i'm saving 10 extra minutes in queue then over the course of like a year i've saved like a year and a half of my time in queue instead in overwatch one i would i would have lost that time but now it's saved in overwatch two because the q times are significantly better they're just superior in every way in this game plus after i do sit in that that queue which is not that bad 35 minutes isn't that bad once i do sit in that queue i get to play a more enjoyable experience right because there's no more double shield right uh, my fourth point it allows for more creative hero design 5v5 notorious for allowing more creative hero design because you no longer have as many factors to deal with when you are creating that hero for example let's say that you're creating a dps hero you no longer need to think about how it's going to interact with two tanks simultaneously as well as two dps and two supports plus its own team you can now deal with the fact that you only are accounting for five players instead of six which means that creating a more creative character is more simple because you have more options because there's less factors to inhibit the design uh which is why we get incredibly creative heroes with just like 
just Mariana Trench levels of depth, uh, like Ilari, where she's just like so perfectly designed. She's so deep and complex. She's got such a wide variety of abilities and techs and just everything about her is really, really, really good and healthy for the game. And I don't think her design would have been okay in 6v6, but it is in 5v5 because they're allowed to make a more creative hero like that due to the fact that uh, there are less uh, things countering the support role because the support role genuinely needed a lot of help, especially in Overwatch 1. That role was really, really kind of borderline unplayable to be completely honest. Uh, but another point is it led to heroes getting reworked that should have gotten reworked. Like, for example, Hog rework. We needed that, dude. Overwatch 1 Hog, fuck me. That character was really, really AIDS, guys. Super annoying. Nothing you can do about it. You're walking around on Soldier and then BAM! You flank Hog, kills you. But that can't happen in, in 5v5 anymore because 5v5 means that there's only one tank, so that tank can't do goofy things like that and ruin the game anymore. Which is fantastic, which means that he gets a rework so that he's he fits into the tank role a little better, right? He, he's no longer that chunky DPS hero, he's an actual tank hero. Right? Similar with Arisa losing her shield. I mean, it's just generally better for the game. I mean, Arisa's design now is significantly better than it was back then, and it makes the game just more fun in every way. Same with characters like Sombra. Like, Sombra today would never work in 6v6 because Sombra today is simply more fair, and fair characters don't work in 6v6 because it's such an unbalanced game mode. Another thing is it has massively increased the pace of the game, thus increasing the skill ceiling. That makes... Overwatch 2 by default a more complicated game due to being faster paced. It requires a larger vat of knowledge and it requires a faster brain to pick from that that steel trap of a mind, right? Where because you're moving at such a fast pace now in this game, there you have to be able to adapt to situations faster. It's added more diversity to the roles, allowing a DPS style supports, which were simply not viable in Overwatch 1. Like there were because there were two tanks, you needed both supports to be healing more because the healing was more spread out. But now with 5v5, you're able to create a more diverse hero in each of the roles. Like for example, Ilari, like I said earlier, Ilari wouldn't work in 6v6. She'd have no time to damage, she'd be healing all the time, and she'd be running out of heal all the time. She just wouldn't work. But she does in 5v5 because she needs to spend less time healing and has more options. She's more diverse. Same with other heroes like Kiriko. Kiriko never would have worked in 6v6. She wouldn't have been strong enough. She would have been really bad. But now in 5v5, because she's able to flank more and, and exert that kind of DPS kind of pressure, it makes her a significantly much better character for the, for the 5v5 format, simply because it actually allows her to, to play in her style, which, again, backs up the fact that you're able to create more creative characters in 5v5. Another point that I see people don't seem to touch on very often is that it has made Hitscan a viable role in the DPS category where it was notoriously known for being completely useless in Overwatch 1. Overwatch 1 was obviously ruled by projectile heroes, but Overwatch 2, because there are less shields due to, you know, it being 5v5 now, means the Hitscans obviously have more options. They have more things that they can be shooting at at a time because, obviously, there's, a, there's not as many tanks to eat up all that hit scan. So this is really good for people with high level of mechanical skill and good aim because they're able to take advantage of that more, which makes uh, the hit scan rule finally viable because people are rewarded for their aim now, where previously they weren't because you'd just be shooting tanks all day. You couldn't do anything else. You had to be shooting tanks, of course. So obviously hit scan is more viable. This is obviously a good thing. Makes just the game more 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 balanced in general because you're you're more likely to see them because they're better uh, which is good makes the game easier to balance i mean this is just simple math instead of uh, six players interacting with six players you got five players interacting with five players now instead of instead of 12 characters all dealing with each other you got 10 characters that's simple math baby it is simply easier to balance there are less uh, things to, to take into account obviously and as you can see from the state of balance currently in Overwatch 2 this is already just 
completely clear cut and true because I mean it's the game is fantastically well balanced currently I don't think there's very many characters who are uh, overpowered or underpowered everything's relatively at the same level um, which is good it obviously has made the game more accessible to everyone because it's a, a simpler game there now there's less interactions occurring therefore um, there's less things to learn now instead of going oh they're running a double bubble comp uh, I'm they're gonna do this and this and then they're gonna use this which was bullshit to be fair double bubble was bullshit but instead of that uh, now they only have one tank to deal with so because there's less interactions that means that obviously it's more simple which makes it more accessible which is fantastic for casual players uh, which means that it's fantastic for the company because casual players tend to be the thing that brings in the most revenue and if it's making more money then it can hire more devs and then with more devs they can do more work create more content they can balance the game even better because they can hire more uh, a larger balance team it's just better for everyone i mean this is simple math guys come on it uh, made the game more complex because of those simpler interactions, there's less of them, it means that those interactions are more complicated in the sense that they are more important, right? Those split second decisions are more important in 5v5, which adds deeper, more complicated situations because even the tiniest of mistakes can be obviously a lot bigger in 5v5 than they were in 6v6 due to having less people in order to, you know, potentially carry you, right? Now, in 5v5, is obviously more complicated and has a higher competitive integrity due to the fact that those minor mistakes are now more impactful, which just simply makes the game better because the skill ceiling is higher. Even though the skill floor may be lower, the skill ceiling has increased because now you need to make the correct decision more often in order to actually win so that the higher ranked players are obviously getting rewarded for that uh, because the rank system is very good. But also... Another touch, uh, another point to touch on is 6v6 created uh, really honestly unfixable issues in the game. Uh, team comps and specifically um, things like double sniper, really, really broken because of the tanks. Uh, nothing you could do to shut those, those snipers down on the tank rule. Just kind of had to deal with it. The tanks were enabling things like double sniper. Uh, and because you had... To, obviously two tanks you weren't able to go things like tracer and deal with double sniper because the tanks were just too much in your face in order for you to close the distance on those double sniper heroes and actually be able to get a kill potentially but we don't see comps like that in 5v5 anymore because you don't have another tank to try and eat that pressure so then double sniper doesn't exist anymore another thing like briggs n tanks enabling Briggs Zen to be a really broken comp where you can apply discord and then if you ever want to dive that Zen or that Brig it's impossible because that Brig is there to, to kill you for example let's say you're on Genji who's really good right now by the way I would suggest playing him if you're playing Genji back in the day when they have a Briggs Zen comp you had a chance you had a pretty good chance of killing them but damn dude look there's a diva there the diva's eating all my bullets dude they're eating my bullets on genji i can't do anything now i'm discorded now the brig is hitting me with her flail and i gotta get out and actually you can't do anything about it because look at that the diva's eating my bullets while well, bam look at that they got a winston putting the bubble down to to make to make it so i the, my team can't shoot the diva in the back and demac her while while i'm shooting her supports right because she's eating my bullets or like maybe they got like a Maybe they got like a roadhog, right? Where they're, they, you know, where the diva's eating my bullets and I'm like, oh no, I gotta get out of here. And bam, I get hooked and they shoot me and I'm, I'm dead. There's nothing I can do about that. The two tanks are just too much, it's just too much pressure. It's untouchable. You can't touch a comp like that. Things like quad DPS and pirate ship too. Hard enabled by the tanks. Let me explain quad DPS. Quad DPS was a comp where you would have four DPS and two supports. This might sound weird. There's no tanks in that comp. How could a tanks, how could tanks enable that? Well, the reason quad dps came around was because the threat of tanks was so large that you had to play quad dps just in order to kill one of them let alone two of them so you were forced onto comps like quad dps to ensure that they were less likely to pick those overpowered tank heroes and when they did pick those overpowered tank heroes in a lot of the cases the two tanks would still beat the quad dps comp even though the quad dps comp was built to deal with tank comps because tank heroes were just too difficult to deal with in a world one because they were too strong they were overpowered in their environment it was too well suited for them they were just too easy to play too easy to get value on 
statistically too strong and majorly over kid bad for the game pirate ship is another thing obviously ryan arisa stood on the car bastion there shooting everything but that's not bastion's fault dude he's just chilling in his environment the problem is the fact they got ryan arisa's million shields everywhere he can't deal with that the two tanks made it too difficult for you to deal with that which is a major problem for the game i think it's relatively obvious now that 6v6 is clearly a shitty format it shouldn't come back it's really bad it's boring it's it's harder on the devs 5v5 is more fun uh, for the obvious reasons it's more competitive and it's more casual too and i think anyone who disagrees with me is obviously stupid i will not be accepting anyone to return any arguments to anything i've said either because that is toxic and hateful um so you must accept my opinion on these facts because they are objective facts and anyone who disagrees is a shill and a grifter. Um, goodbye. Please subscribe and like and subscribe. And please like and subscribe. And like and subscribe. Please subscribe. Like the video. Leave a comment and subscribe, please. And subscribe. Leave a comment and subscribe. Like the video. Like your own comment when you comment about how you subscribed and like the video, please. Alright, goodbye.